So um, before we get into our final segment of Make That Call, I want to touch on um, the PDGA Player of the Year standings. It's bad. They released them, and I don't want to judge it too hard because they made a lot of changes due to COVID. Yeah. Um, one change I didn't see, but maybe I overlooked it, but when we were talking to Paul about it, it seems like normally they had a restriction on the amount of eight tiers they counted. Mm-hmm. Um, they took it off. It doesn't seem like that's there this year, but I'm wondering if it's because of this. I'm wondering if this is like the way around it is they made um they made pro tour have national tour level points right so i'm wondering if that's why like the 10 a tier um restrictions still in but since the pro tours are no longer a tiers they're considered national tours for this maybe that's where that came in yeah um, sure. i should have after paul said it you know today and uh, i should have looked into it a little bit more after that but um regardless i think that this in general um, shows a, a few issues with the system overall, uh, and then it shows a lot of issues with the system, specifically this year for COVID. Mm-hmm. Which, again, I want to mention the PDGA did change the system for COVID yeah. to try to allow, basically, allow it to be a more legitimate system for this year. I think they failed in that because it basically, if you played a lot of A tiers, you won Player of the Year. I mean, they should be able to just. I mean, we'll talk about the standings here in a second, but if you should be able to just look at the, hear these standings and regardless of what you like, the people that we thought like were, you could argue for player of the year over Paul, like aren't even the top. Well, two. I don't think MPO MPO. I'm not super upset about you are out of your okay, mind. Well, well, let's go to MPO first. Then. <laughs> it's shocking. MPO Chris Dickerson leads. And, um, then it goes Ricky Wysocki second. Yeah. Paul third. And I believe Calvin was fourth. Um, but so bad. it goes Chris it's basically Ricky, backwards. Paul. But I don't have an issue with Chris, is my thing. You should. I I don't think that Ricky should be second. Just because he won a major. Well, my thing is, when we talked about Player of the Year, I had said Paul, Paul, Chris, Calvin. No, Calvin has to be second. No, not in that order. I'm just saying those three players. I'm saying those three players. Because I was debating between Paul and Calvin, mainly. I think Paul and Calvin were far away. I thought Chris's name could be in the mix. Mm. I thought it could. Um, The reason I'm not... So I'm not too upset about just the fact that Chris Dickerson's leading player of the year. That All doesn't right. upset me that much. Um, I don't like, A, how much he's leading, and B, the reason he's leading, which is simply because he went and played a lot of A-tiers and won a lot of A-tiers. Right. So it has nothing to do... Because there. That's the important... Other, no, no other big players. Correct. Right. That's what I'm saying. Like, um, It's fine that he won a bunch of A-tiers, but like it would be different if those A-tiers were where all the big players were there. There weren't. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying is like it's not like it's based solely on when he was competing with the rest of the people that exactly. are competing with him. Um, and that's the reason Ricky's beating Paul as well is because yeah, Paul didn't, even worse. and Eagle's even way farther down there because Eagle, Paul and Calvin didn't really play any eight years outside of the pro tour. Eagle didn't even play all the pro tour events. Yeah. So Eagle's even farther down the list, mm-hmm. which think, is also criminal to me. Yeah. I think Paul had like 14 and Eagle had like 11 elite series events or something, something like that. Like that. I, I want to say Eagle's in like seventh. Yeah. It was, it was somewhere way so down bad because he could be argued for first. That's what I'm saying. He could <laughs> yeah. be argued. He could also be thrown into that argument yeah. for player of the year based on stats and performance. But when you put points into it, it just puts so much weight on how many events you're playing, mm-hmm. which is where Chris takes the lead. Um, where this really falls apart is when you flip over to FPO, which we have Katrina Allen, Beating Paige Pierce. Yeah. Very key. Very key statistic. We looked, we, we heard this and we, we saw it and we were like, that can't be right. And then we looked it up and you probably have it written down there. But I do. It was what Katrina beat Paige three out of how many times? Out of 11. Out of 11 they times. They faced off 11 times this year and Paige Pierce beat her. Might not have won. Yeah. But beat her in the event eight of those 11. And Kat only beat her three times this year. And Paige had more wins too. It's not like yeah. it's not like oh that was the head to head, but then Cat had like more wins. No, yeah, Paige well, had more well wins too. Cat had probably more overall wins because she played eight years. Yeah, and we're talking and about the, she those things that matter. The she led series. by a lot. Yeah, like a, a whole lot. I think. Yeah, which is so bad. So this is where I think it all falls apart, and I think it, I think it's mainly because of COVID because. It hasn't been this criminal in the past. Right. It's never been this bad. It's just the points are being weighed very much incorrectly. Well, it's not so much they're being weighed incorrectly because a win for an eight tier is only like five points, but it's the fact that there's not a lot of events this year. To me, eight tier shouldn't have counted. Yeah. This year. Personally, I, I for player of the year. For rookie of the year, yeah, because you gotta be looking at all rookies. Right. Yeah. But for player of the year, I don't see why we're 
counting the Hub City Halloween Classic or yeah. whatever it is, the these random A tiers that no one other than you know three or four top tier players are going to. Right. In Why a, is that counting? In a normal year with an, without COVID, we should have elite series scheduled that pretty much mean that a pro player might play one or two, maybe three A tiers in a year. Yeah. Like they should be busy enough with the big events that everybody's going to be. No, at. They're not going to these obscure right. random A tiers. Because, like, I mean, this year, like, they had, to, like, Chris Dickerson, dude just likes to play disc golf and he plays all those stuff around Tennessee and Virginia and whatnot. So, like, yeah. it's not a problem that he's playing them. It's just no. a, it's a problem the way the points were weighed. I mean, the biggest crime. It, like Chris did have a good season, but like the fact that like if take away his USDGC win and all of a sudden Ricky wins play of the year, how on earth does that work? Like, yeah, I, again, I don't yeah, have, that'd be so bad. I'm not that upset at the MPO side simply because it's, it's Chris winning. If it was Ricky winning, I think that would be another thing of like, how is Ricky beating Calvin, Paul, Chris and Eagle. And Eagle. Um, but with Chris, you know, Chris is someone who I think had to be in contention anyways. You know, win. maybe not points wise, but statistics wise, he, he's always up there. He was, I feel like I could be wrong there. I didn't look at all the statistics, but when we talked about player of the year, he was for the foundation he was awards. He a good bit behind Paul and Calvin though. But he was up there. He, I mean, at least, yeah, he was top three. Exactly. But that's like top three when Ricky and Paul are both 40 under and then the next guy's 22 under. Okay. It's not that drastic, but I mean. That's what it felt like. <laughs> but I'm, I'm saying that. On FPO, you're right. It's more of a. It's there's a, no it's argument a, it's for a bigger for problem. Cat over Page. There, right. There's not one. That's Cat, what I'm saying. If you're the PDGA, how are you not looking at that and being like, well, that's not right? It's like if you compute some kind of like Excel equation for like a, an assignment and you hit <laughs> enter and you're like, that can't be right. Like that shouldn't be like that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how. <laughs> I don't think, I don't, maybe they like just were like, oh, this is a great idea. Let's do this, and then they released it without actually looking at the list. It or must maybe they not don't, have because it's so. Or maybe wrong. they don't care about the list. Maybe they're just saying, yeah, this is how it's going to be this year, and whoever wins it based on these, you know, oh, well, Paul and Eagle and Calvin and Paige should have played look. more A-tiers. Could you imagine if, like, the NBA gave, like, an MVP out? This is, like, some, I, I don't even know what the equivalent is, but, like, that'd be, like, some guy that just, like, has no business. Like It would literally be, like, golf. Well, golf's the easiest one. If Tiger Woods had an incredible season, Tiger Woods, Rory McIlroy, Justin Thomas. My golfer's getting named. Here yeah, he goes. How, many, how many can I do? They all had incredible season, and then Sergio, whoever, what's his name? Garcia. Sergio Garcia wins Player of the Year without oh. winning a single PGA Tour event, but because he played a lot of local events at his golf club, he got Player of the Year. And they're like, "Well, I'm sorry, Tiger. You should have went to your little country club and <laughs> played a little more." You I mean, that's won. a bit extreme, but I mean, yeah. But that's, you see what I'm that's saying? the point. Like Chris okay. Dickerson is okay. not going to go. Sergio Garcia playing on the web.com tour shouldn't count towards his player. Right. Of the year. I mean, the bottom line is Chris Dickerson is not going to go to an A tier. The dude is like a top five player in the world. He's not going to go to an A tier with no other of those top 20 and guys lose. there and lose. He's going to win yeah. because he's amazing. And it's nothing against Chris Dickerson no. because the dude wants to play golf. Like, yeah, go, go play it. golf. But it's just shouldn't. that shouldn't count towards right. this year's player of the year. If they want to in general, what if they made, sure, what, but, yeah, what if there was like a rule where like the, the field had to have a, like the top certain amount of players in the field, their ratings had to add up to a certain amount. No, <laughs> I don't like it. it would work though. It wouldn't because, well, I mean, it might, yeah, but it I would. just don't like, I just don't like anything where we bring ratings into it. Cause then that just brings up more issues of like, yeah, I'm just saying, I'm just trying to think of a way that you, cause like there are a tiers sometimes, like let's say when the memorial's an a tier and like people do show up to it. Then we'd be like, well, the memorial counted. Yeah. Like, there's no other way to really count it other than with ratings. You'd have to say, like, the top 10 players had to have a rating. No, it combined. just would have to be on the national tour or the pro tour. Well, it's not going to be. Well, then that's too bad. It's not going to count towards player of the year. I mean, I'm fine with that. Uh, to me, that's the simple defining I mean, it's the line. the easiest way to do it. For this year. I, I think once there's more events and enough events that the little A tiers, five points here and there doesn't matter because there's enough pro tours and stuff to cover up, then, then who cares?